Hello and welcome to the OpenSplice DDS hands-on webcast series. My name is Rani Torenbeek. I'm a senior solution architect with Prism Tech, and I will be doing this presentation for you. You are watching the episode called Getting Started, Part 1, Windows Version. This part is continued by one other part, Part 2. In this presentation, I will cover three items. First, I will give you a quick overview of the OpenSplice DDS architecture. Then, I will explore with you the OpenSplice DDS installation, covering the important directories, important files, and some of the environment variables. And finally, I will give a short OpenSplice DDS demo. I will show you how to start and stop the middleware, and how to inspect it when it's running. In total, this will cover about 10 minutes. On the screen is a very schematic overview of the OpenSplice DDS architecture. My colleague Angelo Corsaro will cover this more extensively in his capsule called OpenSplice DDS Explained. Basically what you see here is a set of applications on the top, application 1, 2 and 3, a shared memory segment which is the heart of, the, of our federated architecture, and four services in the bottom, a configuration service, a SOAP service, a network service, and a durability service. The applications themselves are communicating with each other via shared memory. The services are responsible for doing the distribution with the required quality of service settings. In this picture you see four services, but this is actually a pluggable service architecture, which means that any services can be switched on and switched off according to your requirements. On the top left you see the OpenSplice Tuner, which is a very useful tool for inspecting a running system. On the left you see the configuration file, which contains the configuration for the middleware. It is read by the configuration service, also called Splice Daemon. On the right you see a database, which is written by the durability service. This service is responsible for storing data on disk and keeping it available for late joining readers. Finally on the bottom you see the network. The network service is responsible for forwarding data to and from the network from the shared memory. The applications themselves never write to the network directly. It's only the network service that is capable of doing that. With this knowledge in mind, let's explore the OpenSplice DDS installation directories. During the installation of OpenSplice DDS, several variables have been added to the environment of Windows. One of them is called OSPL underscore home. This variable points to the installation directory of OpenSplice. CDing into that directory shows us several subdirectories, some of which I will explain a bit closer to you. The bin directory contains executables like services or the preprocessor. Documentations directory contains a lot of documents, for example, a set of PDFs, among other things, a reference manual for C, C++ and Java, and a getting started. This is a very good directory to start your exploration of OpenSplice. Then we have an etc directory, which contains among other things, a license file, and if we go into the config directory, a standard OpenSplice configuration XML. This is the file that gets read by the configuration service when OpenSplice is started. There's an examples directory, and finally, an index HTML that will point you to all the relevant files, like the documentation, and release notes. Okay, this is enough for getting started. Let's switch to a DOS book for a quick demo. As you can see in this DOS box, I have created a separate directory for this demo. Currently, it is empty. All we have to do to start up the infrastructure is use the command OSPL space start to start the infrastructure. It is reading the default configuration file that we just saw 
in the installation directory slash etc slash config and that means that it starts up the domain called OpenSplice version 3.4 First of all, we can check whether the OpenSpply services have correctly started. In order to do that, we can inspect a file called ospl-info.log. If we look in that file, we can see several messages that have been outputted by the OpenSpply service. Here we see a message, the service has successfully started. The domain is called OpenSplice version 3.4 and it has 10 megabytes of storage. The ospl-info.log contains many more messages and is a very useful starting point to inspect what's going on in your system. Another useful tool is the Process Explorer by SysInternals which shows us the actual running processes. We see three different processes running, which are three different services of OpenSplice. The first one, Splice Daemon, is the service that reads the configuration. From the configuration it has read that both the durability service and the networking service have to be started. This is the default setting. As you can see, SpliceD has created the two services, durability.exe and networking.exe. Back to our DOS box, the only thing we have to do to shut down the infrastructure is use the command OSPL stop. This will signal the splice daemon to shut down and after a few seconds it will mention that it has happened. This is the end of the OpenSplice DDS hands-on presentation Getting Started Part 1 Windows Version. It is continued in Part 2. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation and thank you for your attention.